Slackware turns 25. Debian joins the KDE Advisory Board. And a handy guide for configuring USB over IP. All this plus more, because it's another great day for Linux, everyone. So let's go. <laughs> Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we're going to sit back, relax, <laughs> take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun, interesting things that we found going on in the world of floss, penguins, whatever you want to call it. I'm Ben Stone, joined every week by... Jill Bryant, you know, remember? <laughs> Hello. All the way Hello. on the island, fresh back from <laughs> edumacation land Hello. in Londinium, yes. <laughs> Pedro Mateus. Um, what's going on, everybody? Pedro, uh, you're back in one piece. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I uh, went through a whole week in London getting the uh, CompTIA um, Security Plus certification. Uh, the exam will be coming up shortly. Uh, it's just a matter of me uh, actually sitting down and having a look through those mahoosive manuals what they and you it's uh they're big they're really big is that um or are you like me you retain the knowledge just long enough to get through it and then yeah if you don't and use then it, it's you just lose it. poof. it's like oh how about this thing <laughs> is that a color <laughs> true true what's new in la oh why well, i intended a new meetup monday at the long beach woman um and tech meetup um and it was cool because I got to talk about my history and careers and computing, my history using Linux. And of course, I promoted Linux heavily to the ladies because most of them were Windows and Mac users <laughs> and uh, passed out some more LGC flyers. So hopefully we'll get some more li listeners uh, and viewers. <laughs> From, oh from the man! Media. And more additions to our Linux chicks of Los Angeles. <laughs> Sounds terrifying. Is there always like one person that's like, "Oh, let you see sixty fours"? Oh <laughs> no! I'm I was it. I was it. You know, because everyone else they were. They, it was mostly twenty and and young thirty somethings. So <laughs> right. they didn't. I had to explain what a BBS was. Oh, <laughs> just just so. make sure you don't Google it. Like image. Safe search, make sure that's on. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Over here in Vinland, uh been playing around. I've been talking to oh, I love dealing with Chinese companies directly because the, the first mm -hmm. offer of like this costs this much money. That, that, that that's their way of saying hello. And <laughs> I've started with like a hundred and twenty dollar capture product that I plan on buying two of, and we're down to 70. Negotiations are still <laughs> ongoing. Uh right before the show started, uh this showed up. Mm. Ta-da! Awesome. This is how we make Yay. it rain. This is how we uh, live <laughs> live exorbitantly. Thanks to our patrons, we yes. pick up a certified refurbished monitor, so we can have um, Pedro, Jordan, and Jill all on screen. And more importantly, for the satellite boxes, I don't have to configure them through OBS anymore. <laughs> Which it just mirrored the screens. I, I assure you, it is entertaining to watch, but it is quite frustrating. So I'll be playing with that later today. It's a, it's a good thing it didn't show up earlier because I, I, I don't have self-control very much. And I would have tried to get it set up in, <laughs> on these stands. It's brilliant. So let's get right into this, starting with uh, a birthday announcement. Not Pedro's, because Pedro's was like two days ago. And Yes, yeah. Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! So this is the this is the twenty fifth birthday of the oldest active Linux distro around, Slackware, and uh, many of us who have been in Linux for many years. Uh, this was um, how we learned Linux, and um, I, in particular, remember configuring X F eighty six config, getting Slackware installed, and running Window Maker for the first time, and how exciting that was. So this 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 distro, I still use it on several of my machines here. And it's one of my favorites. Um, it also, um, uh, they had put out a release called uh, Zip Slack, which was a, a, a FAT and FAT32 DOS loopback directory install of Slackware. And it actually was the precursor to the Linux Live CD and USB. So that, that was kind of a big deal. Hmm. And, um, and I, I still have my original install running on a 486 back behind me. It's pretty cool and it still works. <laughs> Hipster, hipster, hipster. Um, I, I remember like Slack back in the day. I distinctly remember installing the point release 1.0 because I think it came on like 20, 24 something floppies. And uh, yes, because I had to go and buy a multi pack for them. 
And you had to do this back in the day because, you know, the only CD burners available were scuzzy and they were astronomically oh, expensive. Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, I, I just remembered when I was reading through that and like getting mm-hmm. X up and running for the first time. This was like a week long weekend project. Yeah. <laughs> And did I ever squee as a little teenager? Yes. Like, ah. it, was, it was nice not burning out your monitor, wasn't it? Oh, man. Yeah. You, you, remember, you used to have to set that correctly, too. You had to look yes. up your specs or you could smoke your CRTs. <laughs> and, you know, this was 95, somewhere there, 94, 95. I, I was thinking about my progression mix. It's like, was it later 90s? Then I was thinking about it. I was like, no, I think by the time... Like 97 rolled around. I'd went like just full red hat because yeah. believe it or not, kids, red hat was basically the Ubuntu of its day with its fancy in curses installer. It was so yeah. easy to do compared to Slack, but I'm glad to see Slack is still around and still as user friendly as a coiled rattlesnake. Uh, Pedro, you, you being the youngster, uh, do, do you have uh, any experience? <laughs> I have used Slack, yes. Like any, I guess, like any <laughs> Linux user, you have to at least try it once. Uh, though I did run Zenwalk, which was the Ubuntu to uh, Slack, what uh, Ubuntu is to Debian. Uh, it, um, it was completely alien to me at the time. This was like 2009, 2010. It's like, this is so different. I was used to Fedora and Ubuntu at the time. It's like, this is so alien. This is so different. I like it. And yes. I uh, read it in my um, netbook for a while until, of course, <laughs> Fedora came around. But that's a story for another day. Indeed. Uh, speaking of your netbook, man. Yes. So, um, Lubuntu. You know it. You probably love it. Chances are you have that one box that doesn't run right with anything else unless it's Lubuntu. Just the bare minimum LXDE and, well... Um, 1804 was released uh, a couple of months ago, and the fine folks at It's Foss decided to do a little bit of a review of everything that you can expect with Lubuntu 1804. And it is still running LXD, as you'd expect. Uh, Jill will get uh, some more uh, into that a bit uh, later on. But yeah, they are saying that uh, as it currently stands, it looks pretty much the same as the previous releases. But uh, it's, yeah, it's using the newer uh, package versions. And for an old machine, I myself have installed um, a, a Lubuntu 18.04 on the uh, ThinkPad T42. It's replaced Puppy because it actually runs pretty well. And it still supports 32 bits, so you can still install it. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, this, I, I'm really looking forward to Lubuntu 18.10, which will be the first distro to use LXQT 0.13.0 as its default desktop. So that's pretty awesome. And we've, we've talked about that on LWW in the past. And um, the, the interesting, you know, the, the thing I was a little puzzled about, okay, well, Ubuntu 18.04 LTS is the last of the Ubuntu's that will support older 32-bit hardware. So what's yeah. Lubuntu, what, what is their gonna, next base going to be? And all I can think of is it, it has to be Debian. Because Debian will continue to support all the older hardware, <laughs> well, unless they want to go to Slackware. <laughs> so. Well, this is true. I mean, they make it a point to talk about LXDE going over to LXQT, you know, instead mm-hmm. of being based on yeah. GTK two, and instead of trying to migrate that to GTK three, uh, they're doing it with QT, and it's like oh, that's an interesting move. Um, it's interesting to see the progression with Qt uh, because. Way back in the day, that was the heavier option compared to GTK3. And it's like, times have changed. Just tell me more. QT. What rhymes with that? KDE, maybe? Yeah. I don't know. No it is, uh, KDE is right now the best QT-based uh, desktop environment, even if it's because it's winning by <laughs> default. And, well, uh, as uh, KDE is in itself... Uh, they have uh, a big enough team and they have a large enough community. And now they have announced that Debian is joining the KDE advisory board, which is great, I guess. I mean, uh, it Mm -hmm. wouldn't exactly hurt KDE to have a little bit of a stableness to it. And we all make fun of uh, Debian stable and call it Debian stale instead, 
But yeah, Katie, you no, could we use a don't, bit Pedro. Of no, no, no one on this network has recently Aww. made fun of Debian, like including me yesterday no. in a video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's yeah, it's um, it's interesting to think of the implications that this may bring. Is like, oh, is this Debian saying that Gnome isn't scratching their particular itch? Uh, are we going to see like a passive aggressive uh, post on the Gnome blog? Uh, like we have for every other time lately that something hasn't gone Gnome's way. Honestly, I don't think so. It's uh, Debian has always been like the, the default uh, DE has always been Gnome, and I don't see that changing because they also have the official um, KDE spin. So there's no need. Though, with that said, there is KDE Neon, which mm-hmm. maybe call it a prediction. But uh, KDE Neon may become Debian-based in the not-too-distant future. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, and um, actually, th- this to me is awesome. In fact, the, the very first few times I installed Debian, um, I used uh, their, their KDE spin. And um, it, was, it always actually ran really, really stable on Debian. And um, they've always had a close relationship. And... Uh, uh, Debian joining the KDE advisory board formalizes this relationship, and uh, it, and it wouldn't surprise me, actually, um, that uh, it it may someday be their dolf- uh, default window manager because of Wayland. So you know that that could happen, and momentarily, actually, um, they did. Uh, Debian did. Um, have XFCE um, as the default window manager yes. for just a brief yes, period, <laughs> and then they went back to GNOME. So it was GNOME, yeah. XFCE, then GNOME. But it was just a brief period. <laughs> I like Debian. It's the thing. I've never had a Debian mm-hmm. installation that had X on it because <laughs> I've never was like this. This is a perfect desktop workstation. No, if I hated myself that much, I'd install Suzy and use it for a desktop. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like both distributions, just not for desktop usage. Uh, that's good to see. Good to see everyone getting along together. Up next, not what you think uh, by the name. Another thing you probably don't want to Google. Uh, Catfish146 <laughs> is released. And on top of that, it's now part of the XFCE project. That's right. That desktop uh, manager that I show for aimlessly because apparently I hate GNOME or something. I forget how it goes. Uh <laughs> If we're being 100% honest, I had no idea Catfish was a thing. This was a hashtag T-I-L for this, but it is out and it's a handy little search GUI. I installed it. I tried it. It was just stock on the 1804 box and I was like, huh, that's there. I might have to install it. No, I think it was pre-installed. What it does, it goes out. You can find everything. It's basically, am I wrong by saying it's like locate with a GUI on top of it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's pretty much that. I've actually... (laughs) Yeah, I've actually been using it for years, and I, I found it as a nice alternative to the find command um, um, as well. So it, it's been out, what, 2008, 2009, maybe earlier? <laughs> yeah, and it's come, uh, if you installed the uh, Zubuntu uh, desktop meta package in Ubuntu, it will pull down Catfish. And yeah. uh, as far as uh, GUI search uh engines functions software goes uh, outside of angry search catfish is probably right up there it's uh it's light and yeah as much as i love uh, pseudo find for its slash pipe grep yeah. <laughs> whatever you want to find <laughs> this uh this could be an interesting way to do it through the gui if you yeah. have an irrational fear of the command line well, it's not that. I mean, it's definitely getting over learned behavior because if I'm going to search for something, uh, muscle memory opens the terminal. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't, even if there's a perfectly fine, um, you know, things like, uh, what is it? Uh, like uh, GNOME ships with like that system resource monitor. While looking at it with a three tab setup, it's compl- it's excellent. It's a great tool visually, but HTOP, that's where I go 100% of the yeah. time. That's always the battle that I have to fight. What do we have coming up yeah. next? Certifications, Jill. Certs. What's this about? Okay. <laughs> so um, th- this is uh, five reasons open source certification matters more than ever. And this is huge. I- I've seen this as a just a, a, big, um, a big development in the last few years. Uh, 
And one of the reasons, demand for Linux and open source talent. Uh, yeah, that that is, um, it, it's it's huge and on the rise. And the demand actually exceeds the supply. And I've actually hugely been noticing this at the Linux conferences I go to, like Scale and the Linux Foundation events, where recruiters come in droves because they know where to find the cream of the crop Linux talent. And um, on-site interviews and job offers are common at the Linux conventions. So that's, that's a good place you can go to get your certifications and training and find jobs. And uh, the other reason of getting the interview, um, one of the challenges that recruiters always reference, especially in the age of open source, is that can be hard to decide where you want to have come, uh, who you want to have come to the interview. So, you know, when they go to the conventions, um, it's, it's nice because uh, they can get the one-on-one. -on -one. And um, the, the third point is confirming your skills. Certification programs allow you to step back, look across what we call the domains and topics and find those areas where you might be a little bit rusty. <laughs> so that's really awesome. And confidence. Um, this is the beauty of performance-based exams. You're working on our live system. You're being monitored and recorded. Your timer is counting down. This really puts you on the spot to demonstrate that you can troubleshoot and troubleshoot in real time. Hmm. and yeah. making hiring decisions. As you become more senior in your career, you're going to find the tables turned and you're on the role of making a hiring decision. So there's are so many reasons to get an open source certifications uh, in today's day. And the, the workforce really wants to see, that, see those now. And yeah. hopefully the schools will <laughs> start adopting these. <laughs> It'd be interesting teaching. to see that, you know, I mean, <laughs> As far as education, technical institutes and stuff like that. Uh, I was curious because Pedro was going through, you know, getting brained on whatever. Yeah. On, yeah. <laughs> Security. Like, right. I was like, what would it take to get my Red Hat engineer cert back up to date? The uh, EX300. I looked at that and it's like, yeah, no. <laughs> those those, those, yeah, no, those days are, are gone, right. old man. Yeah. Just let it, let it go. Um, they are very pricey. And uh, if, you know, if work is willing to pay for me to get a few more uh, courses and certifications, I think I might take some of the higher level uh, Linuxy ones. I'm very yeah. much down for that. Well, it was your birthday, man, and I, I, I <laughs> kind of have serious about like maybe unfoot the bill for your MCSE. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like maths at the base level. Let's not get. Crazy. No, no, it's a, it's your Microsoft certification. No one no yeah. that you had that and Oh, uh just MCSE, not yeah. AMCSE. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, listen, I I wasn't gonna try to overreach. I was gonna give you something you stood a chance of getting. Um get your job at Redmond, it'd be great for the show. <laughs> so I wanted to give this quick note, uh LibreBay. In a little bit of trouble. This is open source. I mean, anybody can deploy this system and for crowdfunding is open for that. Pay what you want. And to help out open source projects, they've kind of had a little bit of a run in with their payment processor, Mango Pay. Mm -hmm. uh, they're effectively, as I say, throwing them out. Uh, the service isn't shutting down, but it's going to be disrupted until they can fully migrate away from Mango Pay. Uh, what happened is they walked in and they're like, hey, man, there's some kind of sketchy things, you know, getting processed through your service, through your site. And they came back and they said, you know what? Here's the thing. Uh, we can start checking all these things out. And their processor came in. It's like, a little late for that. But it's kind of sad because this was a good alternative to, you know, if you have like Patreon or Kickstarter or anything like that. I mean, this is an open source, completely transparent. They didn't take a cut outside of processing. It just never really took off, but they are still in business. They do say if you have money in your wallet currently, that's the main reason I wanted to mention it. Uh, go ahead and pull it out or it's just going to get distributed. And if you are a creator, which we do have a thing on LibrePay, I don't mm -hmm. think we have to do anything. Mm -hmm. So there is that. Um, and I, I, I don't agree with what the processor did, cutting them off like that. Completely yeah. understand it. I think this is just going to be a learning process. 
because even Patreon, which we use, and we've been using Patreon like since year two, basically, is like PayPal and their payment processors. We were talking about this on a pre-pre show a while back, a couple of months back, because they said, hey, we're not, you know, X, Y, and Z. We don't want to process transactions or stuff like that. And mm-hmm. yeah, it's one of those necessary evils, I yeah, guess. Yeah, just cutting someone off without a warning. It's like the moment you see something odd and repeated happening, tell your business partner, it's like, yo, this is happening. We're not okay with this. Mm-hmm. Do something about it. Give them a chance. Because the way that uh, LibrePay is um, talking about it, it's not, they didn't say that. They didn't provide uh, an explanation of why they did it. Uh, they just said, no, you guys are out. Pack up your stuff. You're going. Mm-hmm. And that that's a bridge you burn. And then people go public and you burn a whole lot more bridges around. It's a pretty big fire. It, mm, just yeah. tell people. Handling it like that. Then again, the processor could have come back and like, look, these 16 accounts were laundering money. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, uh, Back to more fun stuff, though. A tutorial for USB over IP, because apparently that's the thing. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, so if you'd like to, say, have a central machine with all your peripherals connected, and you just, uh, once you're in the network, just get to that uh, server and have, say, a webcam from your laptop that's plugged into the server, or a microphone, or anything that you can plug in over USB from the network without physically having to plug it into whichever box you're using. Well, uh, fine folks at the Linux magazine have a tutorial which uh, lets you um, set up USB for its slash IP. And it is the, I had a look through the commands and once you have the server set up and it's recognizing all of the, um, all of the devices, it is simply just USB IP, uh, once you have the daemon running, USB IP and set the uh, uh, launch it with the I'm attached just looking flag. at this, man. They hooked up a scanner to the system. Not because anybody actually uses a scanner. They were just doing it because they could. I know what's going yeah. on here. <laughs> so you just run it with the attached flag, uh, send it the, uh, the internal network address of the server and which uh, bus ID it's connected to. And boom, all of a sudden you have a scanner up and running that you can get over the network without having to worry about third party drivers. Yeah, Pretty this good. is really, really awesome. And actually, um, this is not a well known uh, service of the Linux kernel, but it's been included in the Linux kernel since 3.17 and onwards. And I had never, actually never heard of it as well. So th- this, this, this is a, will be fun to try. And this is actually, like Pedro was saying, a great way to network old USB printers and scanners yeah. and cameras across a network that do not have Ethernet ports. So this this is really, really cool and had no idea it existed. <laughs> it's a cool thing. Uh, the only, mm-hmm. I, mean, I knew, knew this was possible, but the only application I could use would be video and the latency on that. It's just uh, nope. But yeah, like you guys said, absolutely a very neat trick. Even if you want to play around with it, um, this is like right up there learning like, wait a minute, you can do that. And it was like, I, I think it's uh, learning that you can send pulse audio over the network. And I was like, wait a minute, you can do that. And I was like, I didn't have to buy all these Sono speakers. That was a thing. So we don't <laughs> normally get to talk about gaming, but we can talk about this because it's homebrew and Linux. It's a Tegger SOC. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> yeah. So this is really cool. Nintendo reportedly rolling out new, a more hack resistant switch hardware in the past on LWW we've talked about uh, talked about how uh, there was a um, an error coming from the manufacturer um, that had bypass that had um, uh, burned out a fuse on the switch and they kept saying well that that can't be fixed and that can't be fixed but apparently they did with a firmware patch and um, you still uh, can run a lot of the hacks as long as you don't update your switch to the latest firmware. So <laughs> the, the fail overflow hack we talked about is still, yeah. still doable. And um, yeah, there is lots of other, other hacks as well. And um, yeah. Yeah, guess, this uh, one is just meant to address <laughs> the, uh, 
the fusée mm. gilet. No, uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. Hardware. The, it's basically a JTAG over the uh, USB debug boot shell. Uh, so this one is meant to address that. They just reinforced the uh, the firmware on the chip as the new consoles were coming off the line. Yeah. And uh, like Jill was saying, if you still have version 4.1 uh, running on your Switch, and even if it's a new one, because that's uh, apparently what they're coming out of the factory with, you can still uh, apply the failover flow one, which is software-based. But the moment you upgrade to... Um, Five point whatever. Five five point oh point oh. It's no no longer possible. So, yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. a pretty interesting thing. <laughs> this is the half half step measure because mm-hmm. like uh, they're going to have to do a hardware refresh of the switch in order yeah. to completely mm-hmm. lock this down for another three minutes. Smart thing to do because you don't know what's in circulation right now. Go buy about ten switches and sit on them for about a year. <laughs> you get your money back, <laughs> guaranteed. I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. Um, Put them on eBay. <laughs> that is a thing. Um, uh, you did a thing, Vin. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. I, I, I did. <laughs> yes. a, see, it what I awesome did, too. ladies and gentlemen, is I o- opened my stupid monkey mouth and said I was going to do a thing. <laughs> then other Vin, that voice in the back of your head, your conscience, some people call it. Mine's not a conscience. Um, <laughs> it's like, hey, you said you were going to do that thing. You're going to do that thing. So I did that thing. Um we did a review of what we are currently using. Jill's getting her return video from it, and I'm getting Jill's video from it because we have two hooked up there um, having fun with each other. This is a review of our $70 1080p 60 HDMI capture cards, dongles, if you will, that we are using for the show. Um, this is real quick. This is like two minutes, 50 seconds, because it's me. I don't, I'm not a talker. I got in give you the business what i like about it you know it's 1080p 60 doesn't overheat we used it for several hours saturday we're using it right now plug and play with linux there's no setup you plug it in it shows up as a webcam virtually lag free i would say it's slightly better than the uh steam link and it's like 79 dollars. you do see some pixelization every now and then but in the video you can see what i'm talking about and it's sporadic and it's not horrible it's a yeah like a split second. Uh, I do have some yeah. comparisons in the video with Sirius Sam and Talos and just some straight capture of Hollow Knight and Distance because those were the games that I could, you know, a bunch of stuff's going on. So you could actually see and freeze frame. And I mean, it's sharp. It works. It's priced to sell. And I think the only downside I saw with this was if you have two on the same system, who good luck. Uh, you can make it work, but they have the same serial numbers. <laughs> so especially if you're trying to use both of them with like obs or anything like that it you can't get it to say i'm this device and i'm this device there's no way to rename it trust me i tried everything short of recompiling a kernel modifications so keep that in mind if you are out on the market looking for some nonsense like that nice uh so yeah Peter, are you gonna go pick one up because i'm sure everyone needs capture cards right <laughs> <laughs> yes no. I might. <laughs> Not right now, because uh, I'm very, very poor <laughs> this month, but uh, I might. Uh, I guess one thing I should say, I did say this in the video, is <laughs> I'm not going to say it's a common misconception, but I've read it a lot of times. People will buy one of these. We, we're not using it for game capture. You don't have to. You can yeah. use X Composite with OBS, minimum performance hit, but they'll pick up like an Elgato or something like that and loop it back into the system, saying, well, this will do the it'll offload on the seat. No, no, it doesn't. So, I mean, unless you're buying a card with a hardware encoder that's supported with Linux, Mm -hmm. which we're talking some black magic type stuff right there, literally, uh, didn't see any performance difference. I mean, we're talking like maybe one frame, two frame, and you couldn't replicate it except for Deus Ex. Don't ask me why Deus Ex outside of running like junk. Still, that game has issues to start with, yeah. On Horizon 1700 yeah. with a 980, <laughs> Mm-mm. Uh, with X composite ca- capturing, it was like eight to ten percent slower versus running it through yeah. uh, the HDMI capture card and just capturing cool. it that way. So, I just wanted to let everyone know that I did the thing. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, no more things for a while because that yeah, took an entire a lot day. Of work. <laughs> um, but, but that was my first magic talking hands video and i was like hey look it's the guy behind the camera and there's the hands and i was going to do sock puppets but i'm too lazy 
Okay. Um, let's thank the beautiful birdie people that are making this show possible. If you are one, thank you so much. We are talking about people who support us on Patreon. Because if you like what we do, hey, man, maybe you can consider, you know, buying us a cup of coffee every month. Because that's kind of what we're asking to do. Hopefully. Maybe, maybe you will. You can join over a hundred beautiful party people who contribute to our illicit coffee laundering operation. That's right. Get some neat rewards in return and our eternal gratitude. Plus you can come hang out in discord. It's like a yeah. fun, fun, <laughs> weird, or right, weird is the right word. Uh, weird, educational. Yes. <laughs> That's where we're hanging out the other six days a week, but you also get access. Uh, one thing we are not big on, um, paywalls. I mean, we have IRC, it's completely open and it's tied into Discord so everyone can join in live. You know, we're not like, hey, give us nickels and dimes. Uh, we do want those 18 quarters away, Kimmy. Uh, but we have a pre pre super shows, in, which is its custom, it's its own video. It's You get your own customized RSS feed that you can put in your podcatcher because uh, if you're helping us out on Patreon, you are effectively our bosses. So it's kind of like, hey, bosses, this is what we're up to this week. Admittedly, like 20 minutes of every hour is going to be dedicated to what we're watching. Just deal with it. Um, yeah. <laughs> but we do talk about what's going on in the show. Uh, we do have to read something, Pedro, because somebody yeah. sent us something off of our Amazon wish zone. Yes. Uh, Mr. Uh, Admiral <laughs> JT sent you an Amazon thingy. Oh, man. Listen. <laughs> Yay. HDMI cables came just in time because I used these. When I was shooting that video, but you get to send a little thing that we are legally required to read against our better judgment as the <laughs> gift. Uh, Admiral JT writes, he says, uh, you need to put more cheap stuff on your list. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, you missed out. Drugs ate all that stuff up. Drugs like, boom, all the cheap stuff's gone. And uh, Including the pink chair. Listen. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff we have on our wish list is like cable stuff we're going to buy and use. We don't use it correctly, but it's actually a good thing to go check if you want to see Mm -hmm. what we've picked up to put this uh, joint together. Uh, Let's see. We do want to thank a returning patron down on Incognito. Cognito. Welcome (laughs) back, my friend. And go for it, Pedro. Go for it. What is (laughs) Sharivig von Havenstaven. Yay! Uh, you know what? I'll give you a B plus on that. That was okay. good. Thing. All right, that's pretty good. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Um, stay tuned to the end of the show. You get your name in the credits and all that fun stuff. And is our way of saying thank you. All right. All right. Shilling time is over. So let's have a Ooh. slice of pie. <laughs> Up first, uh, how to build a Raspberry Pi wireless access point because that's a thing in 2018. I'm just going to go ahead and say this is a project for your kids on the weekend. This is, this is not practical. <laughs> I mean, if you want to do this, of course, you're going to need a Pi 3 or the ZW. Look, that business this is from PC Gamer. All this business in our show notes, and you can check that out. I don't have the scripts enabled. That's why there's no pictures. Um, but it walks you through setting it up, uh, getting your uh, DNS mask, all that together, uh, the hotspot D, and pretty straightforward i mean it this is a very verbose article i think somebody might have been getting paid by the word (laughs) but yeah (laughs) uh set up tweaks and all that that is something that you can do with a pie i mean i guess maybe if you need to you know slap some weefies in the garage and you're like all right i don't want to buy anything i just want to macgyver this (laughs) if you have a pie with wireless running about yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) although uh this is an article from pc gamer about mm-hmm. how to set up a Wi-Fi hotspot with a Raspberry Pi. Well, that just yeah. tells me that those screenshots that I don't have enabled are probably <laughs> showing you how to do it from Windows. Uh, yes, yeah. that's the very first one, yeah. Hmm. Uh, it's uh, I can't help but feel like the author, you know, besides being paid by the word, uh, wishes he was writing for some other outlet, one that, say, focused more on the DIY neat stuff rather than PC Gamer. Hey, man. Don't say bad <laughs> things about PC gamer. We love you. I don't I'm not saying know. bad things. I'm just saying there's a bit of a mismatch of content here. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, I mean, hey, P- Windows users are capable of some things too. You don't have to. <laughs> just don't have to always assume they're munching on glue sticks. Um, I like this. It's pretty neat. And I think the moral for me, I read this and it's like, yeah, 
go on eBay and buy like a $30 Linksys and slap DDWRT on it. Just save yourself yes. that headache. Uh, use your yeah. pie for other <laughs> cool projects. Like what we have up next. Oh yeah, this one up next also awesome. uses a Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, and well, a team of, uh, well, it's mostly a dude, but he managed to draft a bunch of people to come and help him. They built a glider uh, which they had to wire very carefully not to let it, you know, try to uh, raise itself back up uh, so it would just keep going and not lose any speed. And they uh, attached it to a balloon, launched it 10 kilometers high, triggered the uh, release, and then just followed it. Uh, and to do this, uh, they used the Raspberry Pi uh, Zero and the um, an Arduino-based Pixhawk. Uh, which uh, is the newer version of the old Ardu Pilot, uh, and since the uh, the creator was already familiar with Ardu Pilot, he went with Pixhawk, and yeah, they got it to fly 122 miles. And once they uh, tried to pinpoint, uh, once they tried to pinpoint the location of where it had landed, it was about 10 meters off of where the readout said it was supposed to be. Which, if you compare it to the original uh, flight that they did back in 2015, where it was 10 kilometers, kilometers. off, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's significant. Going from 10k to just 10 meters, that's pretty good. That's really, really good. Good Listen, job. Man, when your <laughs> yeah. progress is, hey man, we got it to land in the same zip code. Um, yep. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. That's pretty and cool. I, Go ahead. Yeah, I actually was amazed that the the um, after uh, the it creates a fire to burn the wire to release it from the high altitude mm -hmm. balloon that the glider didn't just blow up. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> they had to time that just right. I don't you know. know. I'm more surprised <laughs> that it didn't fly away to freedom and escape. <laughs> <Yeah. characters. laughs> keeping keeping poor Raspberry Pi W's. Yeah, well, it's it was an ingenious way to do it instead of having having you know the 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 study the scientific uh, calculations and studies come down um, via parachute like usually happens. Oh yeah, so that, no, that's what was so great about this. I'm glad it didn't do like a Im imitation of a Portuguese drone or it got a pair <laughs> or and it was like, hey, look, a penny right down into the water. Right. Um, <laughs> that's a thing. Uh, that's going to wrap us up. We got a little bit of feedback to get into. Uh, Pedro, how can the yes. lovely people do that? You can do that very easily by going to linuxgamecast.com, hitting the contact button, and uh, making sure to pick LWDW from the little drop downy menu. Then uh, fill out your <laughs> fill out your name, your email address, the <laughs> subject, and the message. And then you got to prove that you're smarter than Vince Captcha. And then, well, good luck with that. Uh, <laughs> that's why I, ha I haven't sent any feedback. <laughs> 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 but yeah, that's the easiest and most reliable way for us to uh, see your message. Of course, if you're a Patreon, you can also leave us a comment on the Patreon posts. Uh, chances are we may be able to uh, get to your YouTube comments. But if it's just a small thing, we will just reply to you right then and there. And if it's like a big thing or a completely nonsensical thing, we will feature it right here, right now. Absolutely. And if you're lucky, Pedro will argue with you. Yes. <laughs> it, it, it's beautiful to see. Uh, this one, I'm guessing, coming from Jill, right? Yeah. Yeah. This was uh, Shadeen um, on uh, on uh, Google Plus, and he was responding to the article why GPU prices will be dropping further because of the whole data mining and new GPUs coming out by NVIDIA and whatnot. And Shadeen said, this is a case where we need to get hardware to Ven Stone, Pedro Mateus, and Jill Bryant for testing. I want to see hardware testing done by LGC. Seriously, it's hard to believe that the open AMD drivers are worse than the Nouveau drivers. The reason for me switching is I want to use open drivers. And yes, Shay, the open drivers, the Mesa drivers for the Radeon cards are beautiful. Are really really beautiful. Um, you can get an older older Radeon J GPU running Vulcan uh, with yeah. those drivers, and um, it's just really um, you know r r really really an awesome awesome way uh, to use the. Uh, it's actually awesome more awesome to use the open drivers. The closed drivers um, I have stability issues 
and don't work on some of the GPUs. The there's, closed drivers, there's a, yeah. a horrible misconception with that. Yeah. <laughs> the Fire Pro should tell you Pro means yeah. if you're running it with CentOS, using it in Maya yes. or anything yeah. like that, that's what it's geared for. You're playing it with games. It don't work. I mean, you can throw it against yeah. AMD for saying, because listen, say you're coming from Mac, maybe you're coming from the Windows. You're going to go to the company's web zone. They're like, here, download these drivers, because that's normally how you've done it your entire life. You're not, I don't need to go to a GitHub or a what? No. Um, yeah. <laughs> then you install it, try to play games. It's like, this is junk. This is horrible. Then you learn, Pedro. Uh, mm hmm. Do, do you have any thoughts, Pedro? Or are you just mining? Yeah. Can you talk? It's, uh, no, <laughs> yeah. I was thinking uh, Shay was actually replying to the um, uh, the comments that were going on in that thread. And um, yeah. there were a bunch of people saying, oh, the Nuvo drivers are better than the um, mm -hmm. the AMD no. open source drivers. Like, you, you what? What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> yeah, and it's, exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, actually, I, I'm sorry I interrupted you, Pedro. Yeah, it's, it's but, all right. Go ahead. He's used to it. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, exactly what Ven said. Um, I use the Nouveau drivers on on my Fire Pros for rendering. So, and they work beautifully um, on on those cards. Um, they're really good for the OpenCL rendering. And um, but for gaming and anything else, you want to use the open open source Mesa drivers. And um, it's the the only disadvantage you will have between them and the in, in, and using Nvidia cards, which have really good proprietary drivers, is that multi monitor support is an issue. So yeah. so if you want to run multiple monitors, uh, you really want to have the Nvidia cards. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, I mean that's definitely an argument you can always get in with a proprietary versus open source. One thing Nvidia yeah. has supported Linux since the long long ago. Mm -hmm. So yeah, exactly. That is one reason, and they've worked. I mean, before that, 3D effects had great Linux support. Uh, mm -hmm. Then Nvidia nommed 3D effects, and they kept up with the Linux support right on. And yeah. I'm digging that what Jill said. It's right. I mean, if you need to slap seven monitors of a thing and have them configured <laughs> weird, I mean, I have multiple X screens, but then I have like these two monitors tied together in one shot on the same X. I mean, it is easy to do. It's like laughably. He's like, I can't believe this mm -hmm. is going to work, and you save it. Let it and then sometimes the NVIDIA thing's like, are you sure about that? I'm like, just, just trust me on this one. Yeah. And it'll let you do it. <laughs> but back to the question that the article started out, why are GPU prices getting uh, so cheap? Uh, have you looked at the price of crypto lately? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's <laughs> this, this is uh, I would thing. say if you're looking to buy a GPU, wait till the end of the month. It's like early August, there's going to be some interesting things happening mm -hmm. yes i've <laughs> had a 1080 not even a ti just a 1080 uh on like the wish list just to watch the price yeah. like the i do not need that the only reason i even would even entertain getting it at that current price is because you and jordan have one and that irritates me a little bit but <laughs> outside of that it is currently right now 499 dollars yeah which, that's almost msrp right there yeah yeah I mean, those were going for seven plus easy yeah, just a couple exactly. of months ago. Huh. So it's a it's a good time not to be in the mining market, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, JWP writes in. Hang on, somebody needs to resize things, don't they? Well, that's mm -hmm. that. Maybe no. I think you're giving Jill seizures. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, I think it's happened a few times today. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Especially right when I'm trying to read an article. <laughs> uh, boo. Look at that. Uh, thank, thank, I want to thank both of you for covering for me while I was doing yes, that. Um, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Show notes. He writes. Okay, uh, show notes. Hi, team. Enjoy. LWDW, the deep voice one, not Padero. Ooh. So. <laughs> So I, I can't tell. Is that an attempt at humor or being edgy? Hmm. <laughs> anyway, I never attribute to malice that which is adequately hey, explained Jill. by Steve. Yeah. <laughs> just, just minimize the window, Joe. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, a full browser and a console. Recently, it began with a B, but I cannot find any show notes for LWDW or the YouTube channel. One. Do you know what? Do you know the name of the browser in the console? Question mark. Followed by two. Where do you put the show notes? Well, 
Brouch. <laughs> it's called Brouch. There's one. Part two is uh, where do we hide the show notes? Uh, we have a very, very devious system of concealing the show notes on every YouTube post uh, and a label that most people gloss right over called show notes. Yeah. It's got a, it's, it's also followed by this um, URL. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. If you click on it, it, it will take you to this uh, this website. I think it's um, linuxgamecast.com. <laughs> well, yeah. That, that, that's, yeah, that URL thing. If you click on it, it'll take you right to that post with, with the show notes. So you can go to linuxgamecast.com yeah. and like click on our show, yeah. this show, and it, everything's in there. They're long, they're detailed, they're girthy. I mean... <laughs> Everything, and, everything and, you look for in show notes. Yeah, and there's a link to it on all the YouTube videos. So a link to the show notes for every show. <laughs> like I said, deviously, yeah. deviously hidden. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for us. Uh, we are going to bounce out of here. We will see you next week. Come join in the fun with your support. We're able to stream five days a week. Tomorrow is another <laughs> gaming night with Jordan yes. and friends. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> I'll be back Friday for trivia if you want to join in a little bit of late night <laughs> fun in the jack. And go check out Pedro's uh, attempt to play distance at uh, a very it cinematic. Was miserable. Yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was great. <laughs> it was horrible. Um, we love you. Pedro shows us how to cheat. <laughs> We're going to take a look at the credits. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Yeah, don't quote that out of context, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, thank you all, lovely, lovely people. Um, yes. All, what was it, 18 oh, of you wonderful. who joined me yesterday? <laughs> yeah. That was atrocious, but uh, thank you all very, very much. <laughs> <laughs> Get our wonderful executive producers and producers and all the people who contribute to our network. We love you guys. <laughs> Thinking of uh, Linux game cast as a network. I guess, yeah, no, uh, we have enough shows to call ourselves that, I guess. Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yes.